Hey yo, how's it going everybody? My name's Alexander Buffalo and welcome back to another Monster Hunter Rise video. Today I got five tips and tricks for new and experienced players with things that you might have missed and are important to know going into it to help you with preparation, getting your materials you need, etc. So if you like this video, make sure to drop a like below, subscribe if you like this content, and otherwise let's get into it. Alright, starting off with number one, we got Eat Your Dang Dango. It is very important to always eat before you go on a hunt. If you do forget to eat before you go on a hunt, you can always eat at the base camp of the location you are hunting at. Eating not only increases your stamina and health to their maximum limits minus the spirit birds, it also can give you nice useful statuses and stat increases. So things like Dango Bombardier increases damage of sticky ammo and gun lance shells. Handy if you're using gun lance or sticky ammo. There's tons of these that are very handy, and then towards the bomb, bottom, you can even get defender ones that often increase damage taken, and straight up elemental resistances to whatever you are fighting once you know what you're, what they use. Super handy, make sure you do it. Second thing to go with the eating dango is dango tickets. There's a way to actually get pretty much unlimited dango tickets for relatively cheap, and you want to use these. Dango tickets, you don't know what they do. Increase your activation chance of your dango skills by a flat 40%. So Dango Bombardier has an activation chance of 50%. Using a dango ticket by pressing X increases it to 90%. This will work for all dango that you stack on your skewers. So it is very good and you can basically get unlimited of them. How to do that? Let me get into that. So in order to get dango tickets, you use the Motley Mix system. The best way to do it is to cook raw meat. So you take some raw meat, we'll say cook 10 of them. And we'll use money or points, doesn't matter which one you do. Have her cook it. She makes some nice, hot, hot. well-done steak. Grab it from her. Leave the canteen, and she will have a speech bubble over here. We go over here, talk to her. Blah, blah, blah. She gives us dango tickets. Now, it seems to vary now since the latest little update. It used to be like every two raw meats you cooked gave you a dango ticket. Now it seems to have some variation. Still, it's a very consistent way to get a bunch of dango tickets. You can cook up to 99 at a time through her, but you can do that as many times as you want. Now, if you want to get a whole bunch of easy raw meat, let's head over to the Argozy. All right, we're in the Buddy Plaza with the Argozy lady. What you do is you chat with her, hit exchange for items, trade goods, and go down to raw meat. Right there, you can buy as much raw meat as you want to turn into dango tickets. Obviously, you can use the well-done stink to keep your stamina up in fights as well. But this is the best way to get dango tickets so you can always have the skills you want for your fights, which is very handy and effective. That's number one. Let's get into number two. All right, for number two, we're here in the training area in our beefy hames. <laughs> we are here to show you the importance of sharpness. Now, sharpness is very important in Monster Hunter in general. Mo sharpness directly affects not only how often you'll bounce off certain parts of a monster, but also your straight up damage multiplier to your weapons based damage. So, for instance, we are here with this hunting horn at currently blue sharpness. So we'll hit this guy here with the forward smash, 40 damage. Show you again, just to show it's consistent, 40 damage. It'll do that every single time, but it's not a crit, and this weapon doesn't have affinity, so it's not going to crit. Now let's get down to green sharpness real quick. There we go, we're in green sharpness. So we'll do the same move. Bop, 35. It's a lot less damage, that adds up over a fight. You don't want to be in the less, the lower tiers. You want to be at the highest tier you can be that is reasonable. It's very important. And I'll put up the damage charts for the sharpness gauges. Basically, yellow and yellow is your standard. That's like your base value. You'll get your base motion value for damage out of that weapon. Anything higher than that, green is 5% more and it goes up from there. Any lower than y yellow, and it drastically decreases your damage. You never want to be below yellow, for sure, and you don't even want to be in yellow. As soon as you can have green, you want to stay at green as much as possible. Second part of number two with sharpness I want to talk about real quick is the yellow sharpness debuff. I actually just learned about this not too long ago, so I wanted to share it with you because it is important to know, even though it's not always applicable. So all weapons have this yellow sharpness debuff, but it is only noticeable with a certain number of weapons in my testing, namely like greatsword, hunting horn, and a couple other like big swing arcing weapons are the ones that are, re it's really noticeable. Basically when you're in yellow sharpness or lower, if you hit the attack, too early in the animation, you will do just straight up less damage. So, for instance, 
We're right here with our hunting arm. We'll do our forward smash from the correct distance. 19 damage with this. We'll do it again just to show it's consistent. 19 damage. But now we're going to be too close because we're right up in the monster's face. Just hunting like two into the action. We hit it. 12 damage. Seven less damage. And this is with a very low leveled hunting horn that does basically no damage yet. Seven damage and that gets worse the higher it is if you happen to be in yellow sharpness for some reason. It gets worse with things like the great sword charge attacks and etc. Because then your multipliers are supposed to be super high. You're lowering them. It's not good. Stay out of yellow sharpness. Like I said, a lot of weapons and some attacks you don't notice it too bad on. But it is there. It's something to be aware of. That's number two. Let's move on over to number three. All right. For number three, we have checking your hunter's notes for materials dropped by monsters and their weaknesses and weak points. In case you're not sure how to get there, you hit your start button, go to the middle option and hit hunter's notes. Go into large monsters and here you'll have your large monsters that you have fought in. So we'll go to Keizu. First page on here doesn't really say much, gives you some characteristics and the long longest and shortest one that you have fought in. Hit right bumper, we go to physiology. This is some where the, some of the good stuff is. It tells you their weak points, as you can tell from what damage type hits them the hardest from where, based on the higher numbers, and the elements that they're most weak to. Very helpful to know if you're having a hard time fighting a monster and you fought in it at least once, you can come in here, see what they're weak to. Very good to do if you're using element. Go into ailments and it'll tell you what ailments they're most resistant to and what they're weakest to and about how often it'll trigger based on this. Keizu, poison's good against it. Paralysis, not so much. Going into the materials and this is where the good stuff is. If you're having a hard time finding a specific material from a monster and you're just like, how the heck do I get this? You go in here and you can find it. So let's say we need electro sack. We go in here, the right hand side gives you the basic where you can get it. So need electro sack target reward so that's just from killing it and possibility of rewards for it after the quest 18 percent chance to get an electro sack 18 percent chance of getting it if we were to capture the monster and then a 15 percent chance to carve one off the monster the left hand side often gives a little bit more specific so like when we're capturing it there's actually a chance of us getting two of these good to know if you have not seen an item from that monster. So for this Basarius, for example, apparently I haven't gotten one of its parts. It'll show a question mark, so you can kind of figure out what you're looking for based on that, but it will still tell you the best way to get it on the right side. So whatever this part is, if I really wanted it, more than likely the best thing would be to break whatever part it is from and then capture, but I'm about to talk about capturing. In the old Monster Hunters, capturing was almost always the best option because you got the same amount of resource of materials, if not sometimes more, and it was easier to do. And there was a lot of rare materials that were just straight up way easier to get from capturing. In Rise, it's not the same thing. In Rise, you are limited to two resources generally, two materials that you'll get from the monsters when you capture, whereas carving you get three. So that's just one less pretty much every single time. <laughs> and there are some materials that you can straight up only get from carving a monster in this one, which isn't the norm. So generally you're going to want to carve the monster, slay it and carve it. You'll get more resources regardless. And usually you will get the ones that you might be needing if you've been no doing nothing but capture it. So check those hunter notes, see what's best. But generally it's going to be slaying and carving it up. That's number three, let's get on to number four. All right, for number four, I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about the Buddy Plaza and things that you may not know and you would definitely wanna know. So pretty much everything in the Buddy Plaza, you wanna keep going at all times. It just helps you, straight up. So first off with the Argozi, for example, you wanna go in here, you always wanna make sure that you pick up your items and make sure to have them getting the items that you are gonna need, things like honey, is great to have going at all times because you'll need it for max potions amongst all these other things. Honey is very important. Good to have it going as soon as possible. Also, you want to make sure you get all three subs as soon as possible so you can get maximized item rewards from using the Argozy. On to the Meow Scenarios. Again, you just want to keep this going at all times. Go in here, select a destination, have them gather materials for you. You can get basic materials as well as special materials that can only be gotten through the Meow Scenarios. Those shiny locations on here, that's those locations are what give you those special items. 
So you always want to send them, if possible, unless you really want to send them to one of the other locations. If you want those special items that can only be gotten through the Meow scenarios, which are used to create a lot of gear, actually, send them to the shiny places whenever they're available, get that special item, good to go. Last part number four I want to talk about is the dojo. You want to keep this running as much as you can constantly. You want to get as many buddies up to level th 35 as you can. 35 is the max currently. Level 35 buddies will get you more rewards from the Meow scenarios, guarantee you better rewards, and in the Argo Z, they have access to the highest level buddy bargaining to get you again. More items, more special stuff from there. You want to keep this going all the time. It takes a lot, but this is the easiest way to get this going without actually taking them on hunts and trying to level them up that way. It takes a while, but it's worth it in the end. You get more stuff. So make sure you do it, keep it going at all times. All right, number five, last thing I have here to talk to you guys about and give you some little tips about is using item sets and equipment sets. You definitely want to do this. It saves you a ton of time in the long run. In case you don't know how to already do that, you go into your item boxes and you have both your manage items and manage equipment here. So we'll do items in this case. Go into manage items and down at the bottom, item loadouts. Click into that. You can save a whole bunch of these so you can save them this is most useful with things like bow guns and bows if you have a whole bunch of different one of those but it is even useful for your blade master sets usually i just have one blade master set that has everything that i'm generally going to need from that and then i have all of my bow guns with all the different ammos they have already ready to go so i can use it so say i didn't have enough items so let's take out my max potions here go back into my M set i don't have my max potions on this set but on my loadout over here i have them an easy way to do this if you happen to use them all rather than restocking or manually doing it from the base item box you go in here i just click that i want loadout one which is my blade master set use this loadout yes bop i have my mega potions now ready to go it'll refill all of your stuff to its possible max from what you have in your item box from the right side over in your loadout. Same thing with these bow guns. So let's say I suddenly want to use my Tigrex heavy bow gun. I just click this. Now I'm ready to use my Tigrex heavy bow gun. I just have to equip my equipment. So to show that, let's go ahead and do that. So we go to manage equipment. And instead of changing equipment and finding the exact pieces that I need for that set that I usually use, I go to equipment loadouts down here. And here we go. They're all here, so I want my sets. Um, I don't have my heavy bow gun one on here because I'm still messing with it a lot. I have the set the items, but I digress. So let's say we want to use the bow in this case. So I just click here. So on the left side, you can see I have currently my sword and shield set ready to go. It's all the same parts. Go down here and click this. Equip this loadout. I am now equipped with my bow setup, as you can see. Weapon changed, my look changed, everything. Nice thing about this is a super quick way to change between your sets if you have a whole diff bunch of different weapon sets that you want to use with different skills and such. It also will automatically move around decorations. So even if you have the same two pieces of armor, so between Hellion and this one, I have Rathalos Mail on both of those right now. Those both have different decorations on them and it'll automatically swap between the two when I choose to equip that loadout set. It is super handy. I cannot tell you enough how handy that is. It speeds up changing around between fights what you want to use exponentially so whenever you create a new set and you really like it you want you know you'll want to use it every now and then just save it um in case you don't know how to do that you just go to a blank spot you hit x to register loadout save equipment to the slot you hit yes and it's there you hit y and you can rename it same thing goes for the item sets you do it the exact same way just go to a blank spot hit x then you can rename it with y after you save it super handy you definitely want to use these. They will save you a ton of time and just make your life much easier. And last, number six, little bonus one. Just make sure to have fun. Do what you have fun with in this game. There's so much this game has to offer. Yes, it is probably the easiest Monster Hunter there has been. I also think it's probably like one of the funnest. It reminds me a lot of Generations, which was probably my next favorite. The All the different switch skills and stuff. This game just has so much built into it. I am so excited for the content that they're going to add. It's going to be great. I freaking love this game. I love Monster Hunter in general, but I have had so much fun with Rise. It is easier. That's okay. It'll get harder once they add more stuff into it, kind of like how World was. World wasn't that hard when it first came out either. Then they added the hard stuff later on. It's going to be good. 
But anyways, that's all I got for you guys this time. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, drop a like, leave a comment, let me know what other tips you have. Subscribe if you haven't already, so you can catch some more of my stuff. But otherwise, until next time, I'll see you guys on the next one. See ya.